Well, good morning, friends. It's Crazy Cheap Chick. I'm back from the grocery store. Let's get these things inside. I'll show you what I got, tell you what we're planning on eating this week. I'm on a big diet, so hopefully I'm eating less. And uh, I'll show you what I got at Goodwill. Found a few things there to save money this week. Share another small money-saving tip with you. And then at the end, I'm gonna make a confession and tell you a little story to make you laugh. I spent $36.88 at the grocery store. Let me show you what I got. I got a pound of hamburger for $3.24. It was $4.99, but I had a coupon loaded, so it rang up a little bit less. And this can of soup, I think, is the only thing that was full price. It was $2.79. And since I'm under the weather, I felt like I needed some chicken noodle soup. Sour cream was on sale for $2.00. And whole milk was on sale, half gallon for $1.59. These tomatoes were $2.04. This cheese, if you bought three packages, it was $1.99 each. So I got three packages of cheese. And these avocados were on sale. Uh, four tiny little avocados, $1.99. So basically 50 cents an avocado. And then these are my clearance items. This bread was $1.49 for the buns. I found two of these Caesar chopped kits for $2.13. Now, I could have bought a head of lettuce for $1.99, so it did cost me slightly more to buy it already shredded, though it does have a couple of things in here like dressing and croutons and cheese. Um, this vanilla bean dessert dip, I thought that sounded kind of good. It was on clearance for $1.57, and I thought I would eat that with these clearance apples. And then they had a sweet onion salsa. It was on clearance for $1.75. Some ready-made guacamole in these little cups for $1.75. And then anything in the red net bag is 99 cents. So I got three bags of apples and two bags of plums. And then I had a free item. This Sargento sliced Swiss cheese was free. So I didn't think that was too bad for uh, my 36.88. I'm gonna have this chicken noodle soup for lunch. And then I know that we're gonna have tacos this week. And so that's why I needed the hamburger and the cheese. And I've still got, with this cheese here, I'm gonna make some hot ham and cheese sandwiches. May make some hamburgers. I've got everything for that and fries. And that'll get me through for three or four days and then um, I'll reassess where I'm at. And I've also got everything I need for BLTs. I could have BLTs and tomato soup. I think that would be pretty good this week also. I went to one of those discount damaged salvage grocery stores today and I spent $34.69. You never know what you're gonna find. Sometimes you find something worth it and sometimes you don't. I did find this all-purpose cleaner for 99 cents. I usually make my own cleaners, but at that price, I thought I'd go ahead and pick up a couple. And this Dial Soap, it's 17 ounces, I think, 99 cents. They had a Dial Soap on sale at Dillon's not long ago. It was about half the size for 99 cents, so this is really like getting at 50 cents a bottle. I got this iced tea for $3.99 just because it sounded good. And on these salvage places, you really have to watch the expiration dates. A lot of times things are expired, so if that bothers you. None of these items are, but a lot of them were. Got this really nice bottle of vinegar for $3.25. I thought that was a pretty good deal. Disrespectful sauce. Never heard of it. But for $2.49, I thought it was worth trying. This balsamic glaze was $2.45. And this is the best deal. They, they always seem to have a lot of makeup at these places. So I got this CoverGirl concealer for 99 cents, this Maybelline uh, mascara for 99 cents, and I don't know what brand this is, but some lipstick for $1.99. A little bag of walnuts for 75 cents, this chickpea curry. It was $1.99. I thought it was worth trying. I just bought some of this waffle mix oh, about two weeks ago when I had my company two or three weeks ago, and I paid $2.99 on sale for this. Now, the reason it's so cheap, it's the box is crushed, but the contents are fine. So as long as you don't mind crushed boxes, and I don't, you can get a deal. This was $1.38. And then... 
this tea. We don't even have a, I don't know how you say that, Wegmans. Um, and I like these because they're individually packaged. So this box of tea was $1.79. This green tea was $1.79. That's why I went there today. I was out of green tea, and they always have a bunch of tea. And then this is the kind of tea I love, the Tetley. Um, I usually pay $5.99 for a package this big, and it was $2.45 there. So I got a few deals. Every little bit you save helps. I finished up my grocery shopping today, and I spent $25.70. This is all I got. Got this creamer for $2.99. This onion was $1.28. This P.F. Chang's was $3.49. Two bags of frozen peas. They were a dollar each. These little container of tomatoes was $0.99. Cents. This steak was $3.54 because I had a coupon for $2.25 off. And then they had this chicken, buy one, get one free, so I bought this package for $7.13. That made this package free, so really about $3.60 a package. Some broccoli for $2.29 and some corn chips for $1.99. So for the next couple of days, I'm planning on making uh, beef and broccoli one night, and then I'm going to make that um, pumpkin chicken chili one night. So those were the things I needed to finish up. Spent about 50 bucks at Goodwill today. I'm going to show you what I got. I got two pairs of pants. One are kind of a light tan and the other are white. And they're both um, westbound. And each of them were $3.75. Since I'm going on that cruise, I thought I would get a couple of outfits that might work on the cruise. And then I got this ruby red top. And it was $7.22. Now I'm going to put on here kind of the approximate cost of things. These shirts um, on the Ruby, I keep calling it Ruby Red, but I think it's Ruby Road um, website run anywhere from $25 to $65. And of course, this is that other pair of pants that I paid $3.75 for. And I got this dress. I really like this dress. It's a lot like the dress I bought the last time I was there. It's the same brand, Rabbit, Rabbit, Rabbit Designs. I spent $7.22, but it still had its original tag on it. Here's what it cost brand new, $74. So I've already spent $25 less than what one person spent for just this dress. Then I got this little baby outfit. I got invited to a couple of baby showers this month, and I have no problem putting things in a gift bag that came from Goodwill. They're going to wash them anyway before they use them. They don't need to know. I'll cut the tags off. I think this was originally part of a set that came from Walmart that cost about $18, but it didn't come with the complete set, just this little outfit, which I paid 2 bucks for. And then I got this little bath set for $3.82. It's missing one of the towels. And so I'm just going to take it all apart and put it in the gift bag without the packaging. This was a great deal right here. Never used queen sheet set. And they paid $34.99 at some point. Someone did. And I spent $5.52. And I looked at these up. I couldn't find the exact set, but brand new sets run about $75. So they've really gone up in price. And you can't beat $5 for an entire queen bed set. Then this was the thing that made me happiest. I got two pairs of shoes. Now these shoes here, which look like they've never been worn, they have no wear on them. Someone paid around $140 for these. I found them online. They're still being sold, and they retail for about $140. And same with these shoes. They're, um, I spent, I think, what, $8.49 for each pair of these shoes, and they're both high-dollar shoes. Um, I'm not sure what these brought brand new. I only could find these. But used, I found them, and I think they were selling for 18, 20 bucks used. And then I got this. This little container here has eight cards and eight envelopes. 
I paid 50 cents for it. So every now and then you need a card. And cards have gotten outrageously expensive. They went five bucks for one card. So getting eight of them for 50 cents was a pretty good deal. But that's why you get addicted to Goodwill is when you find a pair of shoes that still sell for 140 for 849 or a sheet set for um, 552 that sells for 75 um, or a dress for uh, so much less than what it costs brand new. So that's what I got this week. So all of these things came from Goodwill, the little blanket, the little outfit. So this was lesson four, this was two. I know this was lesson four also. So that's about $10. And, but I don't see the need of spending $50, $60 on a baby gift. Salad, green beans, potatoes, and carrots. It looks like a ton of food, but it's really not. Looks like they're calling this a courage kabucha squash. I don't think I've ever had one before. So I'm gonna cook it up today. It's got a bad spot here on the back. I need to use it. I think we tend to throw away so much food that's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's got a bad spot on the outside, but it's fine on the inside. I just cut out the bad spot and I'll throw that away. And I'm gonna get this chopped up. I don't know why, but I always spray mine with a little bit of oil before I bake them. And then once this is roasted, you're gonna be able to peel off that rind really easy. Now, of course, I always saved all my seeds out of these because hopefully I can plant this in the garden. I save the seeds of any variety I don't have. And I just rinse them. Get as much of the flesh off as you can. And you don't have to save every single seed. I mean, how many are you really going to plant, right? <laughs> Unless you want to share. You don't need a million seeds. But anyway, I'm just going to lay these out to dry. And I always keep the sticker off of it. So I'll put that with the... Uh, container when I save them. Now here's some seeds that are already dried. Remember I bought that acorn squash? We ate that acorn squash. It was really good. Milder than the normal acorn squash. And so look at all those seeds I have now. I'm going to start by sauteing some onion and green pepper. I put a, about a teaspoon of garlic in there as well. And now I'm going to add a can of black beans. I don't think it matters what brand, do you? These supposedly have kind of a beer taste to them. I'm going to add a can of French onion soup. I had bought the salsa, sweet onion salsa that I never used. And so instead of opening a can of tomatoes, I'm just going to get rid of it. Chilies and soups are a good way to get rid of leftovers. And I had this corn leftover from the other night, so I'm going to add it with its juice. I'm going to go ahead and add about a can of water. And then I cooked that pumpkin the other night. So I've got this roasted pumpkin I'm gonna throw in there. This is kind of inspired by my friend over at Better Living on a Budget. Check out her channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna add a little bit of chili powder, but not too much. I just can't handle too much spice anymore. And then I'm roasting some chicken that's gonna go in this chili. Roasted all that chicken and I've chopped some of it up and it's going in this chili. And then this is going to be left over for some other meals. There's the finished product, man. I tasted it. It is so delicious. Just really fabulous. My daughter's a nurse and she brought me some free flu and COVID tests. Um, she said they had a bunch of samples about to expire at work, I think. Well, friends, I said I had another money-saving idea for you. If you watched my last video, I talked about all the services that libraries offer that you may not be aware of. If you haven't seen it, please go back and watch it. But another organization that offers a lot of free services is your local hospital. Now, they're all the time offering nutrition classes and health fairs and walks with docs. They have all kinds of programs. But the program I'm going to talk about today is one called Stop the Bleed. Now, my local hospital offers classes in this, and yours probably does too. And I'm going to put a link to the organization where you can request a class if your local hospital doesn't offer it. Uh, we contacted our local hospital. They sent out a representative who taught a class to all our employees. And it was all about, in an emergency situation, the steps that you should take in the field 
to keep someone from bleeding out until help arrives. A lot of it was how to apply a tourniquet and how to pack a wound to stop bleeding. Because hospitals can deal with all kinds of things like infections <laughs> easier than they can someone who's lost all their blood. So it was an interesting class. And one thing they said in it, which I found kind of humorous, was uh, that you can't put a tourniquet around someone's neck. Well, that seems like common sense, but I assume someone somewhere tried it, and so they have to include it in the class. Don't put a tourniquet around someone's neck. So just another little thing that you might check out is what free programs does your hospital offer? Just go on their website and look. It'll be under events or community services. Now, I said if you stuck around to the end, I was going to make a confession. And here's my confession. And you've probably already figured it out if you've watched my videos any period of time. I have had speech problems since I was a little kid. And all through elementary school, I had to take speech classes and uh, they'd come drag me out of class and I'd have to go to a special room and meet with a special teacher. And uh, most of it was just her telling me, you hold your mouth this way. She'd grab my face and try to get me to form my face certain ways or she'd be like, you know, show, show it where you're supposed to place your tongue. And I've always had a very, very difficult time hearing the difference. I mean, I really don't hear the difference. I just know how to say the words now. I can't hear the difference between SH, SCH, and CH. And uh, I mean, you can say it all day long. It, it, it just sounds the same to me. I. I've always said I must have dyslexia of the ear because those words sound so similar to me. Anything with an S in it is really hard for me to pronounce. And I often have to kind of stop and think about it. It did give me a very large vocabulary because as a child, I was always trying to avoid those words. Any word that I knew I had difficulty pronouncing, I would try to come up with another word to use instead. It always comes out more when I'm really tired. And so the other day, uh, I was having a hard time with my words. And one of my friends said, do you have early onset dementia? And I said, no, I think I have right on time dementia. <laughs> so one of my friends was talking to another one of my friends on the phone and she said she was slurring her words so bad and I, I thought for sure she was having a stroke and so I drove over there to check on her because I wanted to make sure she was okay she was just tired <laughs> so these are the things that happen as we get older is that we sometimes don't we we don't speak up and we don't pronounce our words as well and people start thinking we're having a stroke <laughs> But here's my funny story, because since I've always had speech problems, I've never really, you know, 100% conquered it. Uh, when I worked as an investigator, uh, one of the young, eager attorneys I worked with thought he was really smart. And, uh, he said, crazy cheap chick, do you know what a statue is. And I'm like, bronze guy on a horse holding a sword in the park. And he goes, and do you know what a statute is? Like a set of laws enacted by a legislative body? Where are you going here? You know, I'm thinking. And he goes, well, you use those words interchangeably. So I just thought you didn't know what they meant. Because to me, statue and statute sound exactly the same. I really just have to think, how am I supposed to say this? And I have to think about it and say it slowly to get it right. So at work, when I was talking fast or not paying attention, I was apparently switching those words in and out. And he's like, do you know what, what a statue is? <laughs> Anyway, I don't know if you've ever had something like that happen to you or not, where uh, as you get older, 
people have a little bit more difficulty understanding you. Even sometimes when I make these videos, I'll have to film a little segment two or three times before I get it to a point where I think it sounds correct. And if I mispronounce a word, uh, now you know why. And I'm also a horrible speller, and I think that is why. I think since I don't hear things really correctly, can't hear the difference, I just, spelling is difficult for me. And um, about half of my conversations with John Wayne start with the words, how do you spell? <laughs> because I just never really learned to spell. And uh, my grandson is going to be in his school's spelling bee here coming up. And I told my daughter, I love going to those spelling bees. I'm like, it's so dramatic because I don't know if they've spelled it right until they say that is correct or that is incorrect because <laughs> I'm on pins and needles waiting to find out if they got it right or not. I just never learned to spell well. And thank goodness for autocorrect, though autocorrect oftentimes goes, you got to give me more. I, you got to get a little closer. I really have no idea what you're trying to spell here. But uh, anyway, that's my little difficulty. We all have things that we struggle with, and that's one thing that I struggle with. So I hope that you have a great day. I hope you find some bargains, and I'll talk to you soon. This is the other big thing this week. My uh, uncle had had this, it belonged to my grandpa. And uh, it's like 25, 30 years old, but it still runs good. And uh, it's a little beat up, but John Wayne says he's gonna fix it up. And uh, we'll use it here around the farm. Kind of a pretty sunset tonight.